All right, now we're all settled a little better. Oh, okay. Thanks, thanks everyone for coming. It's good to see all your great faces, even though they're half covered, but uh, there we are. Huh. Uh, eternal glory, it awaits all of us. Not the glory of brilliant Achilles, forgotten by Zeus, but the glory of commonplace lives remembered by the true God. In antiquity, there were a number of virtues which Plato reduced like a rich sauce to four, courage, wisdom, moderation, and justice. Courage, the power to maintain the truth in the face of opposition to it. If you have courage, you can find your humanity even in the face of a beautiful death. Wisdom, the power natural to the soul of seeing the good in all things. Moderation, the power to keep our desires in check. The power to say that just because I want something doesn't mean I should grasp at it. And justice, the power that Plato says on which all the other powers depend because it empowers our mind to know, our heart to live, and our desires to move us through life. Each of the virtues cannot last long on its own. In fact, each of the virtues by themselves are not really virtues. They are only precursors, perhaps, to the real thing. Let us not lose sight of that fact. We must be united together in love, or all our striving will be in vain. And only the God of love can be the true ground of our love for each other. Uh, Father Snell, would you come open us in prayer? Please stand with me for prayer. Bless, O Lord, this college and its houses, set apart to the glory of your great name and the benefit of your church, and grant that your name may be worshipped here in truth and purity to all generations. Give your grace and wisdom to those in authority and those who teach, that they may exercise holy discipline and be themselves patterns of holiness, simplicity, and self-denial. Bless all who may be trained here. Take from them all pride, vanity, and self-conceit, and give them true humility. Enlighten their minds, subdue their wills, Purify their hearts, and so penetrate them with your spirit, and fill them with your love, that they may go forth animated with earnest zeal for your glory. And may your ever-living word so dwell within their hearts, that they may speak with that resistless energy of love, which shall melt the hearts of sinners to the love of you. Bless the parents, family, and friends of those who are trained here, Grant them wisdom, love, and devotion in the ordering of their life together. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, before we get to the induction, uh, uh, tradition has it that we will hear from a number of honor scholars. Uh, these uh, uh, scholars that you'll hear from uh, this evening uh, were named by the faculty 
as the Honor Scholar Students of the Year uh, in the previous spring. Um, uh, so this evening, I'd like to welcome, first of all, uh, the recipient of the last year's first year Honors College Student of the Year, uh, Miss Jamila Cross. Jamila. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jamila Cross, and I will begin by saying congratulations for deciding to challenge yourself by joining the Honors College. It's truly a unique experience that will help you grow if you allow it to. Although we are in, in a pandemic and it is of great difficulty to be social, I encourage you to not endure this process alone. Stay in sincere communication with your mentor and find you at least one good friend. Believe me, it makes the difference. During the earlier part of this year, Tasha Page Lockhart released a song called Why Not Me? And the words of the song resonated with me. Although I would like to share the song in its entirety with you, I will only share a few lines. It reads as follows. <laughs> no. <laughs> One day I'm up, the next I'm down. Problems coming faster than I can count. Who can I run to? No one to talk to. Can't somebody tell me what to do? Why did I do it? Why did this happen to me? Then I said, I can get through it. I just have to believe. What I do now, I gotta make it all count. So why not me? I'm the perfect person to go through this storm. It won't break me, it won't kill me, I'll move on. And then I'll come out even better than before. And I'll never see this place anymore. Cause my faith is getting stronger every day. I'm removing everything that's in my way, and the fact that I survived another day makes me say, why not me? I say this to say, yes, you will learn. Yes, you will have opportunities to have fun. Yes, your perspective on life may change. Yes, you will have exciting adventures, but yes, you will have sleepless nights, despite what Dr. Snell might say, with all due respect. Yes, you might have to have a three-minute dance party to keep yourself awake. Yes, you will not get to go to every social gathering. Yes, you may be that person who finds comfort in a tree. Yes, you are going to make mistakes. Yes, you may have to call home or whoever your support system is. Yes, you might have to talk to a counselor or a trusted adult on campus. Yes, you will need to call on Jesus like never before. Yes, you are going to be expected to make adult decisions you have never had to make before. Yes, you are gonna fall short of somebody's standards. Yes, there will be moments when you are sobbing in your secret place because you feel like there's no one who understands where you are going through and there's no one you trust to talk to and you're not sure if you can handle the weight of the internal and external pressures any longer. And yes, you are going to ask questions like, why is this happening to me? But may I answer your question with a question? Why not you? You're the perfect person to go through this. Whatever your this is, not just because you are intelligent, but because God made you for such a time as this. God does not create cheap stuff. No, he built you to last. So do not allow those things which are temporary to stop you. Remain steadfast during trials and rejoice for you know that at the end, you will be made stronger. So wherever you find yourself, know that God has already made provisions to help you make it through it. Although you have, to, all you have to do is humbly accept and endure. Therefore, choose to tap into God's strength. Choose to accept his love and mercy. Choose to lean on your new brothers and sisters when you need help. Choose to support and be patient with one another. Choose to endure. And lastly, choose to believe and remind yourself that you are good enough and you will make it. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. Thank you. Can I get an amen?
Our next speaker this evening uh, was last year's Honors College second year student of the year, uh, Ms. Aria Dang. Ms. Dang. Okay, so there's a poem by this guy named C.P. Kapafu called Ithaca. Hopefully everyone here is familiar with that term, Ithaca. If not, then good luck. So I'm not going to read the entire thing out loud as that'll take too long. And personally, Sean Connery does a much better job. You can find that on YouTube. But I did include the beginning stanza. As you set out for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery, Lystragonians, Cyclops, angry Poseidon. Don't be afraid of them. You'll never find things like that on your way. As long as you keep your thoughts raised high, as long as a rare excitement stirs your spirit and your body quote, unquote. You can find the citation MLA style somewhere. <laughs> this poem, this Ithaca, is something I've tried to keep in my mind. It forces me to enjoy the process of learning, art, and excellence, to savor the journey towards that golden mean. And now that's the end of all the Aristotelian references. We'll continue. See, if there's anything I've learned, it's not to plan out your entire life on a spreadsheet and throw it at your mentor. Because there will be too many revisions and indecisions, and before you know it, you know it, you're on version F1.5 beta edition. There's no better time to spend five hours on JSTOR with bubble tea than now, during your undergrad years. If you feel like taking a class on Russian literature or death and dying, then do it. This is the time to learn for the pure joy of learning. You guys are embarking on a journey, whether it is towards spiritual improvement or the pure satisfaction of conquering a challenge, honors will launch you there. Enjoy its twists and turns of your odyssey. Gather your wealth of knowledge and virtues. You will end your journey changed, whether you like it or not, and hopefully for the better. That way, when you have reached Ithaca, hopefully when you're old and way beyond your undergraduate years, you'll find yourself all the wiser. Thank you. Last year's third year Honors College Student of the Year uh, was Miss Grace Braun. Uh, she can't be with us tonight because she actually graduated. Is currently at some law school in Austin. So um, uh, we wish you well, uh, Miss Braun. Uh, but she did send a message along, which a uh, uh, fellow senior, uh, Miss Emma Perry, has agreed to read to us. Thank you. Emma. Greetings to all of you remotely, as I suppose is the new normal this year. It is my honor and privilege to be the third year student of the year from last year and to get to address you indirectly tonight. My experience in the Honors College was probably the most intense part of my time at HBU, but it was also one of the most rewarding parts. We get the chance to read, discuss, and write about the greatest works in human history. And we get to do it with many of the brightest and most thoughtful students and professors HBU has to offer. Although the honors grind will get you down sometimes, remember that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that you are building skills and knowledge that will help you throughout the rest of your education and in your future careers and lives. To the freshmen, 
I apologize that you are starting your college experience in such an unusual time. Adjusting to college and making new friends is hard enough during a regular freshman year, but those things are even more challenging in this, our year of the coronavirus. Remember to take the extra time and effort to reach out to your classmates, even if it has to be virtually, and start building friendships. And always remember that your mentor is there to help you when you need it. To the sophomores, you've got a year under your belt, just two more to go. By now, you've gotten used to the way that the Honors College works and how to balance it with all your other studies. However, you may also start to feel the honors fatigue. We've all been there. When the tiredness inevitably sets in, remember why you're doing this thing called honors and recapture some of the joy that you got from the books and the people. You are here for a reason, and I promise you'll get through this just fine. And to the juniors, keep your head up and finish well. This year, you've got the great books of modernity, which, most, which often feel most relevant to the world today, and you grapple with the most important book we read in honors, the Bible. As you finish your honors college experience, remember to look back where you started and how far you've come. You've accomplished a lot already. So persevere and keep pushing on to make it to the finish line. In my time at the honors college, I was able to meet some of my closest friends, develop intellectual and personal relationships with my mentor and other professors, and learn about the most influential works and worldviews in history. Through the Honors College, you are exposed to the best that the Western civilization has to offer. And I hope you take advantage of these great books and ideas. So enjoy this year of learning with your friends, your professors. Stay healthy and safe, and dare to be wise. Thank you, Ms. Perry and Ms. Braun. We are here to, in part to induct new members of the Honors College. To do this, we have chosen the time-honored method of chance. Though we know that Providence leaves nothing to chance, and so we are, in fact, leaving everything to Providence. In the Iliad, we read Nestor's advice that they let the lot be shaken for all of you to see who wins it. He shall be the one to gladden the strong grieved Achaeans and to be glad within his own heart if he can come off whole again from the hateful battle and bitter combat. One must be careful with Nestor's advice, but I too encourage you to be glad within your hearts at the house that you will win. We read in Holy Scripture that the apostles cast lots to see who would take the place of the betrayer. It was the way they chose to acknowledge the work of the Holy Spirit. We are neither pagan Greeks of old nor apostles of the first century. We are, ironically, paradoxically, somewhere in between. And so what was good for them will be good enough for us. Let your membership in your Honors College house be a milestone on your path to eternal glory. Uh, at this point, I'd like the freshmen, the first year ladies, uh, if you could stand up and... Uh, uh, line up in the aisle, keeping appropriate distance. And uh, if you need to extend around to the back, you're free to do that. Uh, know that I'll be calling your names alphabetically uh, by last name. So if you know roughly where you are in the alphabet by your last name, uh, you can come down to the front. And if your last name starts with X, Y, or Z, uh, move to the back.
As is customary, uh, Nigel is decorated with the colors of the current holder of the 11th pillar, uh, which this year is the House of Boethius. <laughs> ah, so, um, so as I call your name, uh, come up, uh, draw a card out of Nigel. Try not to look. Um, uh, then you can turn around and announce your house. And then once you announce your house, you can find the appropriate house to get garbed from. Uh, so, uh, ah, there you are. Nur Alhuda Al Ghadi. <laughs> Augustine. <laughs> Marisol Balderas. Marisol here? Not here. Miriam Billing. Virgil. Bailey Boone. Samia Bunite, Leah Canizales, Giselle Carcamo, Augustine. Tatiana Cloud. Sophia Esquivel. Homer. Ashley Flores. Melly Flores. Kirsten Hamilton. Boethia. Anna Wynn. Boethius. Ashley Wynn. Augustine. Augustine. Savannah Johnston. Abigail Jones. Michelle Caranda, Hannah, oh, Michelle's here, Michelle. Augustine. Hannah Marshall. Callie Mayer. <laughs> Crystal Melendez. Sarah Molina.
Caitlin Moore. Sunny Orencia. Alexandra Osborne, Renee Peters, oh, yes, Angel Philip. Natalia Ramos. Mm -hmm. Virgil. Virgil. <laughs> Janae Samuels. Corinne Sandifer. Evie Sline. Homer. Homer. <laughs> Alyssa Sustaida. Homer. Homer. Anique Tankus. Homer. And Carla, oh, sorry, Sarah Yates. Ladies who couldn't be here tonight, they'll draw their uh, names from Nigel uh, later, either tomorrow or next week. If I could have the gentlemen line up, again alphabetically. Gentlemen, uh, Andreas Acuna. Augustine. Cameron Anderson. Angus Bailey, <laughs> Josiah Carr, <laughs> Eduardo Corazon, Nathaniel Elgin. Devin Fears. Augustine. Jack Golick. Virgil. 
Jacob Giro, Donald Hervey, Jareth Corner, Colin Kulesha. Virgil. David Mao. Zach Nicolau. David Phillips. Ethan Posadas, Dan Retoran, Jarrell Reyes, Ethan Schellinger out. Austin Schwalbe. Jacob Simpson, Hayden Smith. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, if I could have the second year students, uh, if you could assemble in the aisle in no particular order. Returning students, the pins that you will come up and take represent a tithe of your Honors College work. Take one as a reminder that you have begun but have not yet finished. As you come forward to take your pin, remember the words of our Lord, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Listen also to the words of the Apostle Paul, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Uh, now, normally you would come and, and select a pin from the dragon mug, symbolizing your foolhardiness to select a pin from the mouth of a dragon. Uh, but I've, I've scattered some pins, you can just take one. <laughs> Watch out for the flames, though. Uh, come, come as you like.
Thank you all. Um, now, normally we would have distributed capes uh, to our first year students this year, uh, but like many things, this is not a normal year. Uh, but uh, we do wish to uh, have a way for you to recognize other Honors College students around campus. So next Monday and Tuesday uh, will be Honors College Days on campus. Uh, what we're asking you all to do is to wear, gentlemen, either your Honors College tie or ladies, your Honors scarf. Uh, if you see any of your fellow Honors students around campus, uh, you are welcome to take a photo with them do your best not to spread the plague. <laughs> uh, take a photo, uh, and then you can uh, send it to our face group, Facebook group, and uh, we will begin the house, well, actually, we'll continue the house points competition that way. Um, the last, order, uh, uh, last item on the order of events for this evening is a uh, closing prayer from Dr. Lizzo. Dr. Lizzo? <laughs> Well, I'm going to pray, and is, is there going to be any applause for God? It better be loud. She's spiritual. Let's, let, let us pray. O oh Lord our God, the psalmist said, in wisdom you created it all. In wisdom you have created all things that are. By your word, the holy, consubstantial, life-giving Logos, your only begotten Son, you have fashioned and, and, uh, and, and created all that is. And you have created us in a wonderful mystery. In beauty and mystery, you have created all. By wisdom, you have established the universe. But we know that, as your servant St. Thomas Aquinas said, wisdom is not a proposition, but a person. It is the person of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And it is he who we follow when we follow wisdom, when we pursue wisdom, it is him that we pursue. And so as we commence this, this very unusual semester, I pray that our hearts may be set on fire in the pursuit of wisdom for it is nothing less than the pursuit of your only begotten Son. May we follow the Logos wherever he goes and, not, and, and, and follow him boldly. Keep us safe, keep us, um, keep us energized by this great truth. And uh, as we go our separate ways, may we go in your peace, for it is in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray these things, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives now and forever. Amen.